Hey guys, Brando New Productions here, and welcome to my Python video tutorial series. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about Python, the programming language. In this particular video, I'm going to give a brief introduction of the language, as well as some of the semantics, and a Hello World program. In the next few tutorials, I'm going to be building out the language from the ground up. Well, knowledge of the language, not the language itself. And in even later videos, I'm going to start building full-fledged projects, and hopefully viewers will be able to follow along and build these projects with me. So without further ado, let's get started on the basics of Python. Before we undergo any history of Python or why it's popular, why it's useful, let's just dive right in and get into the Hello World program. So this tutorial assumes that you have Python installed on in your system. If you're using Windows or Mac, it's as easy as downloading an installer. If you're using Linux, you can probably just use your package manager. These tutorials will focus on Python version 3.5 and above. As soon as you install Python, you should be able to open up your operating system's terminal, in this case I'm using Windows command prompt, and type Python. This will take you into the real-time Python interpreter. Whatever you type in here is valid Python, and as you type it, it will be interpreted by the Python language. So, for instance, if I type print hello world, you can see that Python immediately executes the code that I've typed, and we get a result. Hello world is indeed printed out. I can do with something a little more complicated as well. For instance, I can do some math. 2 plus 2 is 4. This is a great way to kind of play around and explore how the Python language works, right? So we can see that it easily handles decimals. We can see that we can type in strings and add other strings together. And we get a resulting string. We can see that we can create functions. Now notice when we create the function, it is not actually executed until we call this function. So as you're learning the language, I highly encourage you to open up your terminal, type in Python, get into this interactive Python shell, and experiment with different concepts. And that is the theory throughout this tutorial, and this is what we're going to be following. So we've already inadvertently created a Hello World program several different ways but we can go ahead and get into the basics of how this Hello World program works. In Python, the basic variable type that uh, to represent characters in a series is called a string. A string is represented just by quotes and then the characters inside of the string. So if we type in quote, hello world, end quote, Python nicely gives us the representation of what we just typed, right? So it's telling us that, hey, you just typed in the string hello world, and here is the result. We can save this string inside of a variable using the variable assignment syntax in Python. So we can go ahead and say s equals hello world. Now, there is no result of this operation in Python. Uh, assignments do not contain results. This is contrary to languages such as C. So then we can actually get what value is at S by just typing S. And when we do that, we can see the value that we assign to it. Hello world. If we want to get the type of S, we can type type S. And you can see that it is a str which is Python's short for string, right? And indeed, if we type str, you can see that this is a class called str. While you're inside of this Python interpreter, you can use various built-in functions to help you learn. There is the help function, which tells you details about particular classes or modules. So while we have this class str, we can type help str. And Python nicely gives us some help. So there's methods defined on this class, all very familiar if you're if you're used to a object-oriented programming language. There's lots of methods for us to use, 
and some static methods as well. So this is how we should dive into Python by making use of this help function as well as classes and modules that we might be interested in. So remember, we still have this string called s, which is hello world. So much like we printed hello world before, we can now call the print function on our variable s, and we get hello world. Now notice the difference between printing s and getting the representation of s. Printing s actually prints the contents of the string, which is exactly what we would want, right? However, when we type s, it gives us the representation of the variable. For strings, it just Python puts quotes around the strings so that we know they are strings. If we instead have d equals 1, when we type d, we get the representation of Python's 1, which is just the digit 1. These are the basics of creating variables, storing values in the variables, and manipulating the variables, well, calling functions with the variables. We can also call print with numbers, which is identical to just typing print1. Now this print function is a first class function in Python. Uh, it is just like any other function that we'll be calling on our Python journey. So the syntax and format of this function should be expected everywhere. Now that is one of the mantras of Python, actually. You should only be able to do things one way. So with everything we see and everything we learn, you can expect it to be the ideas and the usages. You can expect them to be replicated throughout the entire Python language. Now, Python historically was created in the 90s, and it is used as it was created to be a fast prototyping language. So if you had an idea, you can whip out Python really quick, test out the idea, and then implement it in another language. Now, you'll notice that as we type things, they are executed right in place. This is because Python is an interpreted language. So if you write a Python program and then run it, Python will actually execute line by line of your code. This is in contrast to languages such as C or Rust or Go, where your code is compiled into bytes and the operating system runs the bytes directly. This makes Python a little slower than other languages. However, you can tell that uh, the syntax is a little unobtrusive. It's very much like what most people call pseudocode. So you have an idea and you can very clearly translate that idea into code with Python. And it's this ease of reading and ease of developing that has made Python super popular at companies like Google and Facebook, the big tech giants. Python is also heavily used in labs, data analysis, research, the medical field, artificial intelligence, anything you can imagine. And as we go through these tutorials, you'll be able to understand why Python is so popular. Everything will be very clear, concise, and most importantly, it will follow quote unquote the Python way, which is a pretty political document. I'll link in the description. So we've now learned about storing variables. We've learned how to make a hello world program, and we've learned how to use this Python interpreter. Now, before we actually end this tutorial, I want to show you that there is more to life than this Python interpreter. Because can you imagine writing an entire program in this Python interpreter, giving it to your friend? You can't. It's executed as you type it. So how do we make programs and save them to run them later? Well, we first have to open up a text editor. I'm going to open up Notepad here, slide it over. And then I'm going to make the font a little bigger so everybody can see it here. So just like we were doing before, we can go ahead and type in a Python program directly into Notepad to save the program for later. So we will replicate what we did in the Python shell. s equals hello world print s. That's it. Here is our hello world program using a variable. Now we can go ahead and file save as. I'm going to save it just in my user directory and we're going to change the extension to be .py, which is the standard Python extension. So I'm going to do hello world.py. 
And then inside of our operating system's command prompt, we can execute this function by simply typing Python and then the name of our file. So Python hello world.py. And just like that, it is executed just like it was on the Python REPL. So there you have it, how to make a basic hello world in Python. You have a basic understanding of what Python is as a programming language and the ideas behind it. In the next tutorials, we'll be exploring the Python language through this REPL in order to get a basic understanding of the various types and functions built in with the Python language. Thanks for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe.